Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can capture the foreground events that happen in your iOS application when you're using a Swift UI app. Now, first of all, let's look at the problem that we're facing. We have a stock name and you can look up that stock name and we have a stock price. We also have a function right over here, which is called the update stock price. This function is being called when the view actually appears. So right here. So let's go ahead and run the app and see what it actually looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and run the app. And you will see that it displays the symbol. Great. And it displays the price of the particular stock. Now, if I go back and now open the app again, you will see that it's the same exact price. Now, for your case, it might be okay, but what I want to do is I want to fetch the latest price of this stock with the symbol E and E. But you can see that this is not really the current price. Maybe the stock has dropped or maybe the stock has gone up, but this is definitely not the right price. And you can also think about it if you are having uh, Bitcoin pricing or some sort of uh, e-coin pricing that change so much that the price one second ago was not the same price after five or six seconds. So I do want to get the updated price. Now, obviously I can add a button over here somewhere on the top and I can click on the button to refresh the screen, but I don't want to do that. I just want that when I launch the app, it will just show me the latest price. Some of you might be thinking that, well, shouldn't this be doing it already on up here? Well, on appear is going to get fired once, once the view actually appears. And now the view is appearing. So it's not going to be getting fired again and again. So if I go over there, this is definitely not firing. And that's fine. That's just the way it behaves. The view has already appeared. So it's not really going to get fired again. So what and how can we solve our problem? The way to solve this problem is by intercepting the foreground event. So let's see how we can do that. Now we know that the notification center will fire these public events, which is when the application is in the foreground and the application is in the background. But how do you capture those events inside your Swift UI app? Now there are multiple ways, but the easiest way is to simply go ahead and implement on receive. You can see that the on receive function can actually hook up to a particular publisher. And in this case, the publisher that we actually need is a notification center dot default. And we can go ahead and say publisher. We do have to specify the name of the publisher over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say UI application dot will enter foreground notification. And we will get some sort of an output over here, which we can kind of ignore. So using this, what we are saying is that whenever we receive a notification from the notification center and that notification is of type will enter foreground notification, which is fired whenever the app enters the foreground, then it's going to fire all of this code, which we don't really have. So I can go ahead and say update stock price. Now, in this case, since this is going to be firing every single time, you can remove it from over here because we just want it to invoke any time the application basically goes to the foreground. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So we run the app. And right now it doesn't fire because the application was already in the foreground, right? So don't comment this out. That's what I was trying to say is that on appear should be fired once and the application, this one, this is a common misconception is that, hey, we can just remove the on appear part and we don't even need it because we're doing the foreground part. Well, the foreground is going to get fired when the application goes from background to foreground. But since this is the first time you're running the application, it's not going to get fired because it was never in the background. And now the on appear is going to get fired and you can see that it displays 0.62. Now, if I go in the background and if I go again in the foreground, 
you can see the stock price has now changed. It's 0 0.94, indicating that basically this function is getting fired. Now, there are certain scenarios, obviously, when you will need to use this for this application for a stock or Bitcoin or to keep updated with the pricing, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so use it whenever you, you have a situation that you want to use it. And now you can see that I can go in the foreground again and you can see the price is definitely changing because this on receive is firing again and again. So there you have it. If you ever want to fire a notification or if you want to perform some action when the application goes to the foreground, then you can use the UI application dot will enter foreground notification using the on receive function and perform that particular action. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a brand new course, which is SwiftUI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the most comprehensive course available on Udemy. You can actually see that this is around 17.5 hours, the longest course and the most comprehensive complete course on SwiftUI anywhere. You can see that we start with creating and combining views, building lists and navigation. Then we even dive into the MVVM design pattern, learning how to use MVVM design pattern to create our next SwiftUI applications. I'm also covering the core data integration and also Swift recipes, which includes building a rating view, downloading images. And now I'm also covering all the Swift 2.0 changes. You can see there are a lot of changes coming up. We're already over an hour of changes and I keep on adding new things. The best way to get this course is check out the description of YouTube. And in the YouTube description, you will not only find a link to the Swift UI course, but you will also find many different links for all of my courses. And I would really appreciate if you want to show the support, then check out my other courses. I just released another course on Vapor 4, which allows you to write Swift applications or APIs using uh, Swift on the server and on the cloud, which is an amazing course. So definitely check that out. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your continuous support.